is great today and I am in the studio. I have my timer set and we're going to talk a little bit today about books that I use to make my altered books with. And I don't spend much money on them. I usually visit thrift stores, Goodwills, places like that for books. So that's the first thing we're going to do in our daily creative practice is alter a book. So I'm just going to show you some of the books that I have that I've gathered for that purpose and why I like them. I like to get uh, books that have really good text in them, that have really good things. This one's kind of cute because it's also got little illustrations in it. It's got little poems about music. So if I wanted to make a music themed book, that would be great. This one is just a really old book. I love the paper in it. It is, it's falling apart, although you, I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it's pretty old. But don't you just love the aging of the paper? So lots of times I will not alter this book because it's in such bad shape, but I might use some of the text in it. I might use some of the pages over other pages, especially the ones that have this really cool aging on them. And this, again, is just, it's a, it's an old book. You can find these in most of the thrift stores that I have visited. You can find these under a dollar, almost always. Some, and sometimes some of the thrift stores have specials where you can get four for a dollar or even five for a dollar. I have found them. But this one has a lot of good text things in it and this one would probably be a good one to alter because it's it's in fairly good shape it is all let's see how old it actually is if I can find it it's from 1934 so it's it's still in pretty good shape to to do the altering with and this was just a fun one that of course, I got a Goodwill. There's the receipt for that. Um, and again, it has some really nice um, aging to the pages. So that keep that in mind. That's what I always look for, especially is the aging of the pages. This is just an old photograph album. Not an old one. It's a new one that somebody gave away, but a lot of these windows and things are really good to use in your altered books. So I generally will cut this up and use it several ways. I'll use the flowers in one place, but I love these little windows or portholes or doorways, whatever you want to call to use in my altered books. Of course, kids' books and old ones with nursery songs and nursery rhymes. They always have real colorful illustrations. Love them. And as you can see, I try to not buy anything that is of high value. If I think it's really valuable, of course, that one, the cover's falling off. If I think it's a value, I won't cut into it or cut it up. And if you have a problem with that, you can always go to one of your dollar stores and buy, they always have books for a dollar and they aren't precious in any way, shape or form. So that's always a place to go to look for books if you have an affinity as I do for books, but I like to repurpose them. I love old yearbooks and things like that because the pictures are just so cool in them and, it's, and the older they are the better this is 1945 so just don't you love some of those things even the illustrations are cool in them but I love the hairdos so that's going to be great for me to use this is something I just picked up a day or two ago that I really love. I found this in a thrift store and it doesn't have anything in it, but I love, love, love that it's got a place 
for art at the top and a place to write at the bottom. Of course, it is for primary grades, but my favorite journals of all time were ones where the top I did the art and the bottom I did some writing in. So that's going to be fun. I haven't really decided whether I'm going to just start that and make a journal out of it. I'd love to see if I can find more of these. I might just start journaling in them. Do my art journaling in them because that's pretty cool. So anyway, I hope I've given you some ideas about what I use and what I do to alter books. And I'm going to step away just one second, hold on, and get an altered book to share with you. This is one of my earliest creations. So this is kind of where we're going to be going with this whole process. There are so many things in here, cutouts and added pages. I just love that. Artwork, staining, openings, closings, <laughs> stamping, stenciling, parts of old maps. This was, this was probably one of the earliest ones I ever made and it's just got a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's a nice face that I never finished doing anything with. Folding the pages, we will be doing a lot of that to make pockets and other things. We're going to be cutting, playing, pasting. You can see, I hope you can see, you can see better here, where I have holes drilled there so that we can do some finishing things like beads and beading. That is always fun. Um, again, there is an old like transparent picture. Let me hold it up closer so you can see it a little better. Or put something under it that you might be able to see. That's just an old negative that I found a box of and I've made a hole in the page so you can see it from both sides so that's cool too just kind of a little flip through here of some of the things I have done before and this one needs finish so maybe we will finish that this year um, there's a lot of good things going on in there that's I even went to the trouble of putting um, things around there so the pages wouldn't tear. I love that. I had forgotten about doing that. What are those called? They're not brads. Can't think of what they're called right now, but eyelets. The eyelets to use. And then there is some of the bead work that is fun to do on the edges. And we don't, you don't know what we're going to be into this year. It can be all kinds of different things. But the first thing's going to be altering the book and I did want to do some painting today for you, so never fear. We're going to actually do something besides just talk about the books. Let me move some of these out of the way. And let me open my water jar. Let me find a brush. And I want to share with you one of my very fave, fun new techniques that... I have been doing of late. I love my jelly plates and love to play with them, but I also know that they're pretty expensive and a lot of people can't afford them. So one of the newest ways I've been experimenting with other ways I can get around um, spending that, and one of them was a piece of glass. And I just went again to a thrift store and this is, it's wonky because it's this way, but it suits my purposes totally. And a lot of people think you have to use um, the good paints or acrylic paints to do, um, do your page transfers or your page um, printing, but I don't think so. I love using watercolors. So I'm sorry this may be a little hard to see on here, but I'm just going to wet some of my watercolors, and these are pretty inexpensive watercolors, 
and I'm going to put them on here just very randomly. This is very easy. You should have some kind of paint in your studio, I hope. And just get some color laid down here. Let me get some more red in here. Okay, that's way too much paint. Anyway, let me move this out of the way. And these are one of my favorite materials, are index cards. I can do whole bunches of things with those. I can make pockets. I can make um, tags. I can make cards, depending on what you do and how big they are. And you can buy all different sizes. This is, I do like the kind without lines, but if I can't find it, I will use lines. And just put it down in that wet and see what we get. And sometimes it's better than others. And sometimes I only do parts of cards. Sometimes I will put cards over top of other cards to see what kind of things we make. That made a nice little frame there on that one. And it's all about just playing, isn't it? It's just about playing and finding out new things and new things to happen. Making, making art is fun. It's all about the process. And again, I'm going to lay this one down over top just at an angle and see what happens. Cool. And don't forget both sides because you don't know what you're going to do with that when it's when it's over. And don't be afraid to drag it through to kind of clean your surface here and see what that makes. Look, you've almost got my fingerprints on that one. So that's kind of a cool little thing to have also. So anyway, you can come in here and you can splatter some water on there and put another card on top of it. I just play until the paint disappears or the cards disappear, whatever is first. And you never know with me. And again, it's getting light, but that's okay. Let me just spread a couple more colors on here. I think I've got it all globbed up because I can't really tell what colors I've got there. They've all turned one because I've used it in such a hurry. But that's okay. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? I love that aqua color with the purple. That works for me. And again, just keep playing and having fun. You can do this again with your acrylics. You can do it with watercolors. Watercolor, I find, is the easiest cleanup, but it makes so many fun things that we can use in our books or in our art. Because all of this, when it dries, can be stamped on or stenciled or anything else. So I think I'm just going to leave these to dry right now. Let me put them up there and show you. Didn't take long to make five of them. And here's some drip. I don't know whether you can see that, but I'm just going to put another card in that drip. I love happy accidents. Things that happen just by happenstance. Okay, so we've got a bunch of cards out there. And tomorrow we will come back and do something else with that. If you only have a few minutes to get in your studio, Look what you can accomplish in a few minutes. That was probably less than five minutes to get these done. There's not a whole big mess for you to clean up. Always clean up your brush. I always ask you to do that because brushology is part of making art and brushes can be so expensive that you wanna pretty much keep those clean. So other than that, wash your brush clean up your mess, and I will see you here tomorrow when we do something else with these cards and we actually get into the book we're going to alter, okay? So I hope you have a 
fun rest of your day. Set your timer for 20 minutes. Get in the studio. Create something. And I'll meet you back here tomorrow to see what we can get into.